What is going on, everybody? So, it is the new year. Believe it or not, we're already seven days into it. That just means this year is going to fly by just like 2022 did, but that's okay because we're going to have a good time like we always do. And today on the channel, I wanted to kick off a new year with a What's on My Mac video. So, this is a video I do try to do it on a yearly basis because really, some people do these every single month. For me, I see it kind of pointless to do it every month when nothing changes. Now, some people do change a lot on their Macs. For me, I use the same programs on a daily basis. I might add one here and there or something like that. So that's why I don't do this on a monthly basis. But today we're gonna go ahead and just take a look at what I got going on here starting 2023. I'm very excited for 2023. I got a lot of stuff planned here on the channel. Maybe some different things, new things. So, anyways, let's go ahead and talk about what we got going on. So, this Mac here is my 2018 MacBook Air. This is really the thing that I started this channel with. Uh, I was, I believe, this was like my second or third video was the unboxing of this computer. So, it's been with me through the whole channel. Although with Ventura, I believe this is going to be the last software to be supported on it because they're moving away from Intel based Macs, of course. So I don't know, maybe this year I might have to upgrade my Mac to a Mac Silicon uh, device. I don't know yet, but yeah, this is a 2018 MacBook Air. It's got the baby Intel Core processor. Uh, this one has 16 gigs of RAM and a 512 gigabyte SSD uh, for storage. Yeah, the reason why I got that much storage is because of video editing, of course. Um, I did store all of my uh, iMovie library on an external drive, but it runs so much faster on the computer because my external drive is not yet an SSD. That's why you see this up here. Uh, that's actually a one terabyte, I believe a Seagate drive, and it's just a standard hard drive, so it's not an SSD. So that is why I use the computer to SSD for my movie library. This is just, this YouTube drive here is to store all my uh, clips and things because it is a lot. You can see I only have 45 gigs free of the 400 or 500 gigs. And I just partitioned that drive into my Time Machine backups as well as my YouTube stuff. So yeah, that's what's on my desktop there. But yeah, so uh, we have Ventura 13.1 currently running on this computer. I can't exactly remember what this uh, came with back in 2018. My mind is totally blank, but we've obviously seen several releases of Mac OS and they still run Great. I'm actually going to be making a video um, soon about how Ventura performs on this uh, older computer here. And it performs great. I mean, I think it actually probably performs more smoothly and better than it did when it was new. So that's very nice to see that, you know, usually when you install newer software on older hardware, it doesn't run as great. But that's not the case with Mac OS Ventura. So that's really nice. So yeah, 13.1 is the latest version of Ventura for this Mac. Now, if we go ahead and take a look at my wallpaper, well, it's just the standard Ventura wallpaper. I typically do that on uh, my Mac. I just use the, you know, whatever a system wallpaper um, for my background. Now, I do have a 29 inch LG ultra wide monitor that is hooked up to this MacBook Air that you can't see right now. But on that one, I usually do some sort of uh, like car wallpaper. So right now I have a, a C8 Corvette up there on that one and it looks really, really good. But yeah, that's what I use for my secondary uh, display. So yeah, um, next thing we'll talk about is the dock down here so my dock really doesn't change that much um, the only thing I might do is literally just move it to the left side every once in a while although I end up not liking that as much as I think I would uh, sometimes I change the size of it 
sometimes I like it super small or larger but right now this is kind of the size that I'm going with on it here uh, and then all my programs these are programs that I use every single day that's what I feel like the doc should be used for is programs that you use on the daily basis because some people just fill it up with all their programs I like a simplified clean desktop doc all that good stuff so first thing of course is the finder obviously self-explanatory my browser of choice has been Firefox for the past several years now I've really grown to like Firefox um, some people say you know I see in the comments are like why do you use Firefox who wants to use Firefox well I use Firefox for the security reasons uh, I'm pretty kinda picky when it comes to all that tracking and, and stuff like that so um, let me pull another tab down here I guess for you so you can see it but yeah this is what my Firefox looks like really simple um, how I got it going on I got uh, different things like privacy badger and HTTPS everywhere although that is not really necessary anymore because I believe Firefox does that uh, that's a setting now that you can use um, but I'll show you guys my privacy settings in case you're curious uh, let's see privacy so I got custom blocking all of these all third-party cookies uh, always do not track delete all cookies and site data when Firefox is closed don't remember any history uh, and then clear it if there is any when you close Firefox you could probably uncheck all of those uh, block pop-ups warn when trying to install block dangerous content and then yeah there's the enable HTTPS only mode in all windows but yeah I use Firefox for the security reason and then it's also just something different you know like not a lot of people use Firefox uh, but in the past my browser of choice was usually either Chrome or Safari well Chrome obviously is a tracker <laughs> a pretty big tracker uh, it runs good but I just don't like the thought of all that and I guess if you use Google a lot and your Google accounts and all that stuff well then you'll be okay but that's why I use Firefox mainly is for the security and it's also good for forming browser it's still pretty fast it works great the other browser of course I use uh, from time to time still is Safari there was one time where I was just trying to use Safari but I realized I didn't really like that like I thought I was going to and then I've also used uh, Microsoft Edge browser uh, from time to time which that is a chromium based browser but they claim that they've taken all the Google stuff out so I don't know but Microsoft Edge runs really good on the Mac believe it or not uh, but yeah Firefox is my browser of choice and it's probably gonna stay my browser of choice um, forever until something happens so next thing here is my Mac mail app I use that for obviously all of my email accounts it's you know really good I've used it on the phones of course for all these years and it's still one of the better email clients I think for your Mac other than Microsoft Outlook but Microsoft Outlook is you know more specific than this one is but yeah Mac mail app messages of course that's for all your text and everything use that a ton as well and then your calendar uh, the calendar is how I keep my life straight so I need that on here notes that's where I jot down mostly video ideas but also things that I need to remember and you know write out like video notes and all that kind of stuff so I usually when I'm doing a video I have the notes <laughs> if I'm doing one on the Mac I'll have my notes on the other display that you guys can't see and that'll be kind of my reference point so using that on the daily to jot down ideas then we have Spotify Spotify is my music streaming provider of choice some of you might not agree with that um, you know why aren't you using Apple music if you're such a big Apple guy well I started using Spotify back in the day before Apple music was even thought of and 
I've just loved it over the years. I really have. I've enjoyed it. And I just started paying for premium uh, last year. So I made it that long dealing with ads. So it didn't really bother me, but the ads got more and more. I mean, you couldn't even listen to like one song without getting an ad. So I just, you know, did it finally, 10 bucks a month, whatever, get Spotify premium. That's how much Apple Music costs too, so it's really not any different, but Spotify has been a great uh, music uh, streamer for me, and it's probably what I'm going to be using uh, forever, but there was one point, I'll be honest with you, that I was going to switch over to Apple Music, but the problem is there's no way to import your libraries from Spotify, all your playlists and everything like that, into Apple Music. And that's kind of, that's really hard for me to to grasp because I have created so many playlists over the years. I mean, my playlists, some of them have like hundreds of songs in them, and there's multiple playlists. I mean, there's probably a few dozen playlists that I've created, and then not including all the ones that... I've saved from other users and Spotify I've created and all that so it would take me probably several days to, to recreate my music library in uh, Apple Music so that's one thing that I really I don't like is the ability to not be able to transition all of that over now I know there's some ways I've seen like people kind of doing ways you probably shouldn't, um, tricks and stuff that they use to move all that, but for me it's like, just use Spotify, I mean I can install it on all of my Apple devices and just use it like you would Apple Music, so that's why I'm still sticking with Spotify, but that is my streamer of choice. iMovie is self-explanatory. I use iMovie to edit all my videos. I don't need any fancy editing software like Final Cut Pro or Premiere Pro or any of that kind of stuff. iMovie is simple, it's easy to use, and it gets the job done. It can do all the edits that I need it to do. Now, yeah, one day if I become a big-time YouTuber, I might purchase Final Cut Pro or Adobe Premiere Pro, but for now, iMovie is all I need. It gets the job done, um, and that's what I use to edit all of my videos with. VirtualBox is a virtual machine software, so this is how I run uh, Windows 11 and Windows 10, Windows 8.1 on my Mac. And this is what I used when I was uh, actually in college. Um, when I did a few computer science courses, I used VirtualBox to run Windows 10. And then I installed uh, Visual Studio, I believe it was 2017, uh, in order to do C++ projects. So I got a Mac for college. But as a computer science student at the time, I was just using Windows. Um, and I was going to use Boot Camp, but VirtualBox was getting the job done for me. I was still able to create those C++ projects and run the code and all that. So that's, you know, the reason why I started using VirtualBox. And then once I started this channel, I realized that there was really a demand for VirtualBox tutorials on, like, how to install Windows. Uh, in VirtualBox and still to this day one of my most popular videos is how to install Windows 10 in VirtualBox so I use VirtualBox mainly now for uh, this channel um, in order to do different tutorials and things like that and that's another thing about Ventura it is not happy with uh, the latest version of VirtualBox I mean I'll show you guys right now I don't know what's going on I feel like there's some setting right here um, in Windows 11 that it, that it doesn't like. I don't know what it is. I haven't played with it though. I feel like it's one of these, the chipset or this one right here. Um, but for some reason I cannot run Windows 11. 
in VirtualBox 7 on Ventura 13. So this is what happens. It acts like it's going to start up. So it's starting. And then it's going to just abort it. It's a little slow right now because we're screen recording, but yeah, there you go. And it says NS error failure over here on the right. You can see that right there, NS error failure. But um, I've tried every way that you can fix that and it has not worked. Now Windows 8.1 actually works just fine, so that's a little uh, interesting. But I'll have to play around with that. That's another reason why I kind of want to switch to a different, like a Windows, separate Windows PC is so I can make those videos. But also you'll be able to do VirtualBox videos on a Windows PC. I don't know. I still got this old MacBook we can do videos with, but I don't know. VirtualBox, I feel like, is on its way out, especially with the lack of Apple Silicon support. Um, just kind of worried about it, but yeah, we'll still have VirtualBox videos in 2023. Don't you worry about that. And then the QuickTime player is just there because that's what I used for screen recordings. Yeah, so it's free, works good, it's all you need. We take a look at my launch pad. Um, this is basically just all the Apple apps that come with your computer. I didn't change it at all on the first page. Uh, I never do that. I like to leave them how they are when it, when it comes to the computer. So this is all the same. Uh, but as you can see over the years, they've added uh, a few more apps here and there. Like I can't remember if the home app was originally came with this computer in 2018. I'm not sure. I don't think it did but I don't know. We also have a separate app for Siri, but I think that was with it as well. Um, we still have the other folder, which includes all the uh, other kind of utilities uh, that you want on your Mac. iMovie, I downloaded, of course, that did not come with this, but that is an Apple app, obviously. Now with Ventura, you got three new apps. You got the dedicated weather app for your Mac. You also got a dedicated clock app which is very nice and then you have uh, Freeform which is like a collaboration uh, kind of like whiteboard uh, software so that's pretty cool uh, but yeah these are all standard Apple apps and then on the second page these are all the apps that I've installed as you can see it's really not a lot so it's really not a lot um, you know there's probably not even a dozen of them here but I don't need a lot of other applications like I said but right here, utilities folder. So in here is VirtualBox again. That's self-explanatory. Jolta Caffeine. So this is an app that, oh my goodness, I use this forever. I've used this ever since I have got my first MacBook Pro in 2011. So there used to be an app called Caffeine. It's the exact same concept as Jolta Caffeine. The caffeine, I believe, the concept here is this app allows you to click it up here in the menu bar. So this is it. As you can see, it's right here. It allows you to click on this coffee cup and you can uh, change the coffee cup to whatever you want. As you can see right here. Actually change it up just a little bit. But you can set a duration I usually just put mine on forever uh, but you click on that and it prevents your computer from dimming the display turning the display off or going to sleep so this is really good when you're like uploading a video for example or when you're installing something that might take a long time so it allows your computer not to go to sleep I know a lot um, I use this for when I'm installing like stuff in VirtualBox because that can take a while. You don't want your computer to go to sleep. Also, sometimes late at night I'll upload a YouTube video and depending on how long it is, it could take anywhere from 15 minutes to over an hour. So I'll just click on this, I'll set the time for like, for example, 30 minutes. After 30 minutes this will disable and then my normal sleep settings and screensaver stuff will come into play so it's almost like automatic you know it finishes up 
by the time the video does and then the computer just will go to sleep by itself and I don't have to be awake when that happens. So caffeine is a really handy, or a jolt of caffeine is a really handy little uh, application there. This next one here is called iMazing Converter. So what this does is converts your uh, images into JPEGs. So you can drop an HEIC photo here. So that's the new file format on your phones. They use that to save space. And then that's the video file, of course. So you take uh, one of those, you drop it in here, and then you can convert it into like a JPEG. So I was doing this because some apps don't support that file format right now. Uh, I used an older version of Photoshop at one point that didn't support it. So I would have to convert it to a JPEG before I could edit it in Photoshop. So that's why I got that app. And it's pretty handy, you know, in case uh, you come across an application that doesn't support it. So that's why I have um, that application. This is self-explanatory. This is the Microsoft Office Suite. So Word, PowerPoint, Excel, Outlook, OneNote, OneDrive, Microsoft Word, Excel, PowerPoint, all that is my, I guess, office productivity creation stuff of choice. <laughs> uh, I do not like Apple software on that at all. I, I don't like pages, keynote numbers. I do not like those. This is kind of the standard anyway don't like Google Docs, Sheets, or whatever. I don't like any of that. So this is what I use whenever I need them for all of that. Firefox, Spotify, we already talked about. Discord, everybody knows what Discord is. I uh, use that uh, for chatting time to time. Uh, not all the time, though. I usually do it on my phone. And then this is called Proclaim. This is actually a church presentation software uh, because I handle the... Um, slides for the local church now so uh, when I'm at home I'll have to use that software to edit all that stuff together for them and then it syncs to the other computer at church but that's it I mean that's all it's on my Mac like I said it doesn't change much so <laughs> that's what I got going on right now but anyways guys that's all I got for you today thanks for watching the channel as always let me know what you think what's on your Mac for 2023. Let me know what you want to see this year on the channel. Leave some comments down below. Anyways, thank you guys for watching, supporting me, and I'll catch you on the next video.